it may surprise people to see an instrument like this coming up in this series. This is my modern horn, the instrument I use whenever I'm playing with modern instrument ensembles, and it is one of the most ubiquitous designs of horn on modern concert platforms, the Alexander Model 103, a really standard piece of kit. Um, so why am I including this in my series on historical horns? Well, partially to give a bit of context. I find it quite amazing that we are basically using a design of horn that goes back to the tail end of the 19th century. Um, if you think of all the various horns that I've been sharing in this series, um, some of them were designs that were standard, familiar for a few decades or so. But I find it really remarkable that 125 years later, all almost all modern horn designs are based around the idea of the double horn. Um, so this particular instrument, um, this isn't all that new in that this is one that's probably from the 1960s. Um, this I've had since I went off to study at the Royal Academy as an undergraduate and it was second hand if not third hand by the time I got it. There's little things that help date it. So, for example, there's no crest. Um, there's normally the the um, crest that is put on the bell. Instead, there is an engraved crest um, somewhere. It's a bit hard. To, oh, there we go. It's a bit hard to see. Um, and you've got things like the flat back of the thumb valve. So, from what I understand from Alexander's, this is probably a 1960s model, and it's a really superb instrument. It's a great joy to play this instrument. Um, when I get the opportunity. Um, but as I say, the double horn, the basic idea of a double horn, so you've got um, the horn which is built in F, so I've got the set of F slides at the front, and then by putting my thumb valve down I go into horn and B flat, which has some advantages in terms of security in the high range. Um, so this design of horn goes back to uh, a collaboration between um, Eduard Crispy and Edmond Gumpert. Um, I always want to get the Gumperts muddled up. Um, you might remember I did um, a CRISPR instrument way back last year sometime. Um, so they came up with a double horn design in 1897 and then Alexander's, that Alexander's goes back to the 18th century, I think 1780s they started as a predominantly woodwind making firm. And Alexander's in Mainz in Germany came up with the Model 103 in 1909. So we're over 100 years later and still today this is such a familiar piece of kit to modern horn players. But it dates back to, the essential design dates back to 1909, though there's been a few um, tweaks over the years. So I wanted to play a piece of music from 1909 to celebrate um, the birth of this very famous design of horn. Um, I couldn't find something from 1909. I got to 1910 though, so this week I'm performing a piece am Abend, a Lieder ohne Wörter, by um, Müller, who I think a lot of horn players know Müller for his etudes and things like that. Um, he wrote a handful of very, very nice pieces. If you like this, I'd recommend you check out the work of uh, John Erickson, uh, American horn player, who's put a wonderful disc of works um, very close to my heart. The disc is called Rescued, and um, it features pieces from um, the, the late 19th century um, that he has rescued from obscurity. So do check out John Erickson's recording. Um, so Muller was second horn in the Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra. And another thing which is quite a nice little source is to check out um, Robert Ostermeyer's website because he's got some recordings from round about the time of this composition of um, the Leipzig Gewandhaus horn quartet playing, which is a, a, a wonderful source for ha us to have. Um, so. 1910 piece because I've got a 1909 design of horn, um, Muller 
um, composition for horn and piano. The other little thing I'm just going to share because I just think it's rather nice um, is I have here a Frank de Paulus straight mute and Frank de Paulus was a horn player I think first with Cleveland and then Philadelphia um, back in the mid 20th century and my understanding is that Frank de Paulus is the guy who came up with this very recognisable straight mute design. Um, you've seen various other mute makers over the years do various versions on this. Um, and my understanding is that Frank de Paulus, horn player, uh, started making mutes because um, in the 1940s he was so unimpressed with the mutes that were going around. So um, there's also going to be a link below to lots of information on mutes. Um, so 19, this is pro this is probably mid 20th century. So uh, 1960s horn, mid 20th century mute, 1910 piece from Leipzig. If you're enjoying all these chats and bits and pieces of information about the history of this wonderful instrument, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out on all the social medias. And I um, hope you enjoy this piece.